Come on up. And uh, yeah, it's not very often you get to have this this the this, this subject of the of the of the video and the people who made it in the same room. Again, this uh, story about Piper Blomkist is going to be airing on Pioneer PBS this winter. This is not the final draft. You had a little opportunity to see under the hood um, as things get made. And we have our postcards team here, Dana Conroy, Chris Gieske, and Ben Dempsey. Give them a round of applause. Since, uh, since 2013, this, this team has, has uh, been awarded 18 Upper Midwest Emmy Awards for their work. And uh, we at Pioneer PBS are just, uh, you know, thrilled because uh, they help get our name out there all over the country and all over the world. They just did get back from Sweden, uh, and they're making a documentary uh, about a folk school over there uh, that has relationships with uh, the Milan Village Art School here. So... How would you guys like to start this off? Would you like to say, maybe Piper, you could say a few words. Uh, what, what, well, did, did, did they pass the grade on. with their, with their? It's on. This is on, okay. Yeah, um, oh my gosh, you guys, thank you so much. I'm crying. <laughs> I don't know if my, my mask, I can, thank goodness for masks. We can just pull it up and you can't see me cry, right? That was awesome, you guys, that was so beautiful. Um, I didn't quite know what to expect because, um, I don't know, I, I just felt like when you were at my home, after you had gone, it was like, oh, I should have said this, I should have said this, oh, I, I should have said this. It's like, oh, but too late. It'll just be fine and it'll all be fine. It was more than fine. It was absolutely beautiful. I can't say enough. Thank you. And I didn't say anything about the door, but you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, uh, Funny story. <laughs> we, uh, we ripped the door off of her house when we arrived. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah, I feel, I still feel very bad about that. But yeah, I just uh, very casually pulled it right out of the whole door frame. <laughs> so if you need your house demolished, just call us. We'll make a little video for you and I'll wreck your door. It, it was fine, though. At first, I was really disappointed that it popped right back in because I was really excited that he had broken it because I wanted a new door so badly, and I thought, this is my chance. My husband came home, and he said, oh, no, this is just I'm like... Oh, <laughs> oh thank goodness. So uh, congrats to Piper for not acting traumatized in her interview because we showed up and ripped the door off the house. But, yeah, no, it was uh, really fun to get to, to come to your house. I don't know. It was really fun to get to travel all the way up to Grand Forks and then all the way down to Decorah to see Harley. And I, I wish Harley was here today so that we could um, also get his opinions on the segment, but maybe he's listening online. Um, I, I think we should just open it up to questions. Yeah. Do you have anything coming through, Amanda? No. Okay. Well, maybe there's somebody in the audience that has a question, either about the Harley Ressall piece or uh, this piece on Piper, or for the postcards uh, crew, or for Piper. Any questions, comments? I have a question. <laughs> so um, I, maybe I don't want to ask this question, but you know, you were at my house for just a short time, and um, how did all of the things that we talked about make it through into this nicely concise beautiful from beginning to end process how many hours of editing did that take <laughs> and who who was in charge of deciding what the what the outline was going to be um yeah i guess it's that's the the fun and also the stressful part about editing sometimes is trying to figure out how to make a story concise without losing the heart or the theme of the story and and uh i Hopefully, it yeah. seems like we succeeded, so I'm happy for that. But uh, I guess it just comes down to the the key theme and kind of where the title came from, too, was just the idea that these paintings are really stories. And uh, that's kind of how everything got built around that idea and then the supporting details of kind of giving insight of who you are as an artist and 
It was interesting hearing your presentation earlier today because you said some things verbatim. Yes. So, yes. Uh, elevator speech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's Every good. Every artist needs one. <laughs> it's good when you have that sort of yeah. practiced yeah. word because, uh, I mean, they, those were excellent sound bites for us to have. So, yeah. Yeah. you want to add anything, Dina? Um, well, just uh, I think it's impressive that Chris put this together so quickly because we literally just got back from Sweden and, and then we had to put this whole thing together. So he did it really fast. Wow. Like, what, what would you say, in like a week or two? Yeah, there's probably about uh, overall about a week or a week and a half, wow. give or take, yeah, a few other things settled in, settled in. Which, fun little fact about our Sweden trip, there is a few shots of footage yeah. used in this story from our trip, so... You truly have gotten a sneak peek of upcoming projects. <laughs> yeah. We were still working on this at 5 o'clock yesterday. <laughs> so it's, it was uh, down to the wire. Um, does anyone have any questions for us about how it was made, about for Piper? Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I'm talking to mics very often. So someone is wondering if, if there are going to be Zoom classes from either of these artists offered. I don't know who that would be for. Um, I do have a Zoom class that's coming up in February and March. And that is through the North House Folk School in Grand Marais. And so if anybody's interested in that, the catalog and registration opened up on October 29th. And that is in the Egg Tempera Bunads Molling style. And then American Swedish Institute, I'm a regular instructor there, so if you watch their catalogs, I think we're planning a spring class that's in person, not Zoom. So, and I don't know what they're doing about online there. That, you gotta talk to them about that. I'm not doing anything on my own privately unless somebody wants to be a serious student and they want to um, contact me. I'm always interested in doing that, especially through the State Arts Council. North Dakota has a lot of money that they want to give to people. So anybody out there who's a North Dakota resident, at least there's a lot of access there um, to have them pay to have me teach. I don't know anything about Harley. <laughs> uh, from what I understand, Harley is retired from teaching. So he won't be teaching uh, anymore, but uh, you, could, uh, you could ask him. Uh, and uh, Norma, there in Decorah or through the uh, Vesterheim. Norma's, Norma's watching. Hi, Norma. Uh, Harley. Um, yeah. Uh, any other comments, questions uh, from either online or in the audience here? I heard somebody was going to say something. Lila. Here, just wait a second so the people online can hear you. I was just wondering when Harley Refsal's um, was made, it, evidently. Yours was made recently. Was his a little while ago? Well, it was this uh, summer they went down to Decorah. So we did the filming in July of this summer, and the editing was completed um, yesterday. So. <laughs> <laughs> the editor is Kevin Russell, who is a, uh, a person that we work and collaborate with a lot. Uh, he's in Minneapolis. Kevin, I don't know if he's watching, but good job. <laughs> see, I was wondering, uh, you gonna say something, Ben? Oh, I was, I was gonna say like a, like a wrap up final thing from me would be to just thank Piper <laughs> and Harley, but. For... Could you do it in uh, Ron Porup's accent? Oh, no, not when Ron's <laughs> here. <laughs> um, well, I'd like to thank uh, Piper for for her graciousness, her enthusiasm, um, and for coming down to the Marlin Village Art School. Really appreciate it. Um, please don't kill me, Ron. Big fan. <laughs> Long time fan. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> no, but her passion and enthusiasm, and same with Harley, um, it's very contagious. I know when we got back I was like, I told my wife, I need to make my own paints. And she was like, <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, you don't even paint. And I was like, that's a good point. But, uh, <laughs> but hopefully that some of that came through. I mean, today, I, it's just very contagious. So thank you. 
for that. Well, thank <laughs> you all. Thank you all. Give another round of applause for the postcards team. And uh, yeah, you can you can sit down. We're going to have another thing. But but wait a minute. Uh, as part of our next thing, I would like to talk to you. So come, Piper. So back in the corner there is a painting of Karen Jensen's, and it's called "The Day the Rumagrout Ran Out." <laughs> And it was set in the Mai, what, 1984, 1985. And um, I'm in that picture. Yes. <laughs> and it was the day we, we I got Karen's uh, room of goat recipe, and I got Nesco Roaster, and I had a food stand, and I made a huge batch of room of grout, and we thought that would be good for 40, 50 people. And within an hour, it was almost all gone. So I ran back to my house and made another patch. And it was so much fun. And I kept telling everybody it was my Irish grandmother's recipe. <laughs> but it was actually Karen's recipe. And, uh, and then Karen did this story painting. I had never heard about it, never seen it before. But that's about the time when you met her. Yes, that's about the time when I met her, that she had done that painting for some time. And it was... Um, um, it was a learning experience for Karen, and um, it, there, there were some things that were happening with that painting, but what I saw when I saw that painting hanging in the area that we painted um, when I was at her house, I just looked at that painting, and that, that painting right there was what I looked at and said, this is how you tell a story. You pick, you pick an event that becomes town folklore, and you show it, and you show it bigger than life um, with beautiful execution, but, but just this bigger than life, tiny little event, but you just make it big as, as a picture. And so anything that happens throughout the day of one person's life, those human sensibilities that we all experience every day, there are thousands and thousands of stories. And I used to come to Karen's house and look at that painting. And I took many pictures of it. And when I would go back home and paint, I always pulled that one out and looked at it. And so when I was asked to do this, we were, I think, I don't know how it came up that we were talking about that particular painting. I think maybe I said something about, you know, I'm working with these natural materials and you know, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm doing the best I can. I'm learning from people that I'm hoping know what they're doing and teaching me the right way. But the reality is, I don't know what's going to happen to these paintings in 20 years if my glue is going to just suddenly decide to not hold out or I did something wrong. Who knows? Who knows? But that's not the point. The point is, it's the process. It's the process of storytelling. We enjoy it while it's here. We enjoy it just for now, and if it lasts, it lasts. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We, it's, it's okay, it's okay. But I think we were talking about that, and I mentioned it's like, it's like Karen's painting, and you said, I'm in that painting. Like, <laughs> You're the guy running the home account. I know exactly who that is. <laughs> I have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. It well, is great, it is great. Yes, Ryan, you gotta talk into the mic so the people online can hear you. It, it seems like you, uh, the, the, all of this whole trip that you've been on was totally unexpected. How did, how did, uh, how did this all come up to where you now, the Grand Marais or the Swedish Institute? I mean, how did all this happen? Um, it happened because I sat quietly in North Dakota and ignored everybody else and just painted what I wanted for a very long time, always keeping what I learned from Karen and what I was learning from Judy Chanstead in mind. And, and then the other thing that happened, honestly, is um, there's a man in North Dakota named Troy Geist. He's our state folklorist. And he runs the um, traditional folk arts program through our state arts council. And he started something over a decade and a half ago called Art for Life. And that is a branch of our arts council that brings artists into elder care facilities and assisted living and nursing homes to bring, it's not necessarily art therapy because it, it's more, 
It's more art and wellness for aging, aging gracefully and creatively. And, um, and he, I, I think I had a pr applied for an apprenticeship with Karen through him. And he came out to Milan and he loved Karen's work and he loved what I was doing and he loved the storytelling aspect of Swedishness and the Swedish folk art. And the fact that I was an oncology nurse and used to a geriatric population made me a perfect fit to go into a nursing home and do storytelling painting with them. And so in the state of North Dakota, I've been doing this for over a decade. And the American Scandinavian Foundation from New York, um, it's a group that has a lot of connections between um, the upper Midwestern uh, states um, and Scandinavian countries. And they started a program of um, folk art granting for folk artists from the upper Midwestern states, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, for those artists to be able to travel to Scandinavia and, and further learn in order to come back and perpetuate it here. And that's their mission, that was their goal. And they came to North Dakota because we had a really active program there. And I think they went other places, Minnesota, and I'm sure they were here in Milan. And, um, but they, they built a fellowship program where you could apply for grants, and my student and I were the first recipients of that grant. And they brought us to Sweden in 2018. And then um, since I, the publicity from that just went bananas. I mean, it just went bananas. And I'd been painting for myself and for my friends and been asked to teach here and there. And you know, I'd, I'd rather go work with kids and I'd rather work with elders. And so I just kind of blew that off for a long time. And I guess I'm just kind of, maybe I'm feeling more confident now to teach adults and so I took it on, and I mean, work begets work. You get work to do something, and everybody wants you then. So, and that's kind of where I'm at right now, honestly. And COVID happened, and so I had nothing to do at home but paint. <laughs> you know, even though I'm a nurse, I work at a cancer center, they didn't want extra people there. So they didn't want people in the building. So I was not allowed to go in and work with COVID patients because that's infected area, and they wanted me on, on on reserve to go fill in and give chemo. So, and we want to give a shout out to Shal Sally Yurkovich from the American Scandinavian. Absolutely, Bundy. Sally. If watching. you're watching, man, it Sally Yurkovich is awesome. She just, she just commented. Yes, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was Sally. Very so, much. Mm -hmm. Sally uh, is a part of a cohort uh, with uh, us, and she was aware of postcards and the documentaries that the Postcards team has made. And she said, we are such big fans. And would you please do one on this woman called Piper? Boom kiss. And I'm going, well, yeah, well, yeah, they'll look into it, you know. And uh, then when I found out the Karen connection, mm -hmm. it was like, of course, got to do it. Yeah. So yeah. that's how things happen. It is, it is. Accidental or not, who knows? We can make, <laughs> make that decision for ourselves. Well. well, one last round of applause for Piper. Thank you. And uh, we're going to switch over now to another, another uh, uh, phase of the meeting.